<clears throat> yeah. Okay, so we are back. All right, part two. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> and now, part two. I, we, I, I, I have a, a sort of an intermission type of a transition a graphic that I can add on. <laughs> okay, so we are in the midst, midst of recording. Yeah. Uh, okay, so please uh, continue on. I'm in your hands. I told you that runaway majorities are the most dangerous things in the world. Because someone needs to put a red light up and go, stop. That's where leaders come in. Stop. You know, because you'll do what you can. You become an animal in a majority, a runaway majority. You become a beast. Mm -hmm. You, me, and everyone listening to us, we have, I call them chakras. Okay, I choose to live with that word. But we have different energies, different things. So the fourth chakra is the most important. It's your heart. That heart is where I believe the supreme being lives. And the supreme being wants you to live with art. And we call the word heart. So if you get rid of H-E, you're left with art. You live here on earth. I believe inside that word is the truth. We're the only planet that has a name that represents nothing except earth, right? <laughs> Jupiter's whatever, the Jupiter God. Ulysses is whatever. You got Neptune, you got Pluto, and it's not just from Popeye. I don't know so, about Ulysses, but he's a he's a great character, you know? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you live in art. Get rid of E and H. You live in art. Your bottom three chakras mm. is basically, you know, being straight up. You do what every animal lives and does. You eat, you sleep, you excrete, and you reproduce. And then yes. what humans do is when you're not doing what animals need to do, you figure out what to do because it's all for you. So we create work, we create opportunities, we create hate, we create division because hate and division is the easiest way to unite. If you want a small majority, if you want to control people, if you create what to do to share and to share love, that's a hard problem. But above, above your heart, chakras five, six, and seven, it's what makes us angelic. angelic. You know, here angelic, you yeah. have a throat. Angelic. Here you have a throat. It's where we communicate. It's one of the greatest gifts we have. We can communicate. We can hear and understand what someone's saying because we have magical spells called words. And then what we do is we change the word so people believe that our history is correct when it's just a spell. And if you go back to where the spell began, you could see what Cinderella did or whatever with that magical wand. And then okay. your next chakras, they stay it's above your eyebrows right there, right in the middle of your head, right? Yes. And that's what they call it your third eye. Yes. But that's the intuition. The, the, that's eye, what all those, the eye of Shiva. Yeah. That's one explanation, but I yeah. look at it as the ability to learn how to shut your mind off because your mind protects your bottom three chakras because mm. we're animals. That's an animal instinct. Mm. But over here, if you could learn how to shut your mind down and your mind has a default system because when you try to meditate, it won't let you. It will mm. give you fears of your past. It will give you fears of the coming future. Mm. You need to shut it down and just go mm. just go there and it's so hard to do yes but when you do it it becomes a switch <clears throat> I do so it would you I would you classify yourself as a as a buddhist or pretend pretend buddhist neither i i classify myself as a human being okay. living i'm a consciousness living in a body having a human experience yes you know Buddhism was created, and it's in my book called Taking Jesus Off the Cross, and I share the creation of imperial religions and imperial governments, mm. and I've lived everywhere again, and I go there not to go into the most expensive hotel, or where I, I go, I want to learn life. I'm like, okay. Yes. So anyway, I, you know, when I was in Israel, I lived with the Arabs, 
okay. and I lived with the Israelis. I was like, this is fantastic. Yes. But why do you hate each other? But so anyway, going back to this, I, haven't, was I cool. haven't the slightest clue. There are so many explanations, but nothing will suffice. We're all the same. No, it's all love. But Buddhism was created as a form for the elite because the Hindus <laughs> didn't like the bourgeoisie. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. They were the third. Yes, yes. They, they were the third caste system. So they created an exclusive religion where yeah. these people were able to live their life yes. in the elite form. Buddhism, yes. my problem with Buddhism, if you have the ability to help people, I believe that's part of your duty, being a consciousness of mankind. Buddhism tells you to mind your own business, which perpetuates the misery for everybody else. Yeah. I disagree. I heard the same you know, criti I studied criticism. Buddhism. Yeah, I heard the same criticism at like Quakers, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, totally. And by the way, I, I mean, we have a place in Tennessee called The Farm. So if you're, if you're interested, look up <laughs> The Farm. Okay. And it was the first hippie commune from 1970. Wow. And they wanted Debbie and I, my wife, to basically move there and become the new representatives. And when COVID came, they wouldn't even let us in on the property. So I'm like, I'm out of here. But um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. next to them, where they are, next to them were all the Quakers in Tennessee. Mm. It was fantastic. Just watching them. The state of Pennsylvania, William Penn. He was a Quaker. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's it's. It's interesting when you discover what went on. Everyone looking for an answer, for an external source instead of the internal source. <laughs> We're all from the same water, yes. the water of consciousness. That's, from That's my same... message to anyone that can hear me. Yeah, I'm sure. The same you... thought. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of. Uh... I mean, you. Of what? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm like looking at you. Right now, you're wearing a red, white, and blue shirt. Okay. Ah, yeah. You're putting it on. <laughs> right? Very, very patriotic. Okay. I haven't noticed that. It's like, it's. I'll tell you. Yeah, it's meaningless where I'm from, of course. Yeah. No, but so anyway, if you study the Egyptian mystics and their, and their thoughts and processes, yes. you're wearing the colors of Osiris and Isis. Osiris. That's where red, white, and blue comes from. Yeah. They used to rape themselves in those robes of those three <laughs> colors. Yeah. And by the way, the French and the American flags go all the way back to the Egyptian mysticism, which is being carried forward to this hour by yes. the Masons. You know, it's like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And in my books, I try to, it's too much detail to go into now, but I unravel. No, it's fine. It's fine. I tell you, you where can. You can't. But anyway, I'm honored to talk to you. Yeah, it, I it's like true. your energy. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, you have I a like, quest for wisdom. Yes, I do. I actually do, uh, and I try to. And you wear it. Uh, yeah, I, I wear my. You make aura. Literally wearing my heart on his sleeve or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've studied some of the, you know the hermetic principles and stuff like this. I am I am Hermes Trismegistus and stuff like this and Tita T. And you know, you can't account for the actual his historical validity of the, the manuscript or the text or whatever or the, those, uh, the jade emerald tablets or whatever they're called. <laughs> it's, it seems like a, a nice day of fabrication of a, a very intellectual scholar uh, in the it, it comes from thought t-h-o-t-h -H. yeah that's so the name get... that's the name of my podcast it's so yeah i know yes and so there's two thoughts there's a thought that predates all of it and he was from atlantis and then there's the thought of the egyptian slave controllers Mm -hmm. And what they did is they flipped it around and they did it knowing full well what they're doing. Yes. And I'm recommending to you, 
get get your hands on my the three books the book of earth the colonization of earth and the making of mankind taking mm -hmm. jesus off the cross mm -hmm. and we've got to get out of this place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm telling you right of now course. as i would tell my son, i will pick them up as will, soon as they are avail available to me yeah now that you get them on Amazon, but I, I feel your energy. You're looking yeah. for the same thing as I looked for. Absolutely. And you're going to get the answer. And you, you don't need to agree with I, me. I'm in, a, I'm, with yeah, I'm, a, I'm in pursuit of knowledge. You know, I want to accrue and I want to <clears throat> fill my coffers with as much knowledge as I can, as I possibly can before I expire, you know. Yeah, I get it. I've been there. You know, the all name, elders could do is help yeah. you on your path. You know, the name Thoth, the correct pronunciation, the ancient Egyptian pronunciation is Thoth. And Thoth, uh, in my language, it means like the one that comes from the deeps, you know, the one that emerges from the deeps. So it's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an awesome name, yeah. I love it. And it's an energy. And you could you could conjure that energy up. I believe you could communicate. I yeah. have. So can you tell He's, me a little, a little stories about actually from, from the music uh, world, from the from the music scene uh, during the, during the long history? That you seem to be to be a, a core part of and uh, been involved in for the past I don't know how many years. Yeah, going back to the '60s, the best way I could give you an answer is like we're sitting and we're, we have a roulette wheel and you're rolling the wheel <laughs> and it stops at 1976. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what do you want me to know? What do you want to know about '76? <laughs> whatever year you want, I'll give you an answer. Sir. No, you know, yeah, some whatever. of the some of the highlights that are like important or are memorable in your mind. Well, I'll tell you another one. I wrote a book called God's Gangsters in Honor, and I'm answering your question <laughs> with giving you another thought. Yes, of course. Okay. What what is the goal of every musical artist? Well, some of them want to be gods. Well, how do you become a mm -hmm. god? You need a gangster. What does a gangster do? He makes people believe that this energy is a God. So what do you do? Well, yeah. you go out there and you put the music out and you go do a tour. Maybe it's a tour like Jesus did. Maybe Jesus is the world's first rock and roller. Maybe Buddha was. They go around and they create an image. And how do you attract people? You attract them through song and dance. If we're singing a song to you, and if I have your attention, it will make the particles that comprise your body move and jump. And when you watch, like the biggest harm that could possibly go on is when I'm watching people like Peter Gabriel try to put out a new song and nobody cares. But if he goes and plays memories, which gets your particles remembering, because all we are are memories, all we are are stories. And we share stories of life. So if you're going to go watch an old group like the Rolling Stones, who my dad was their lawyer, and I grew up with them. And I remember Mick Jagger looking me in the face and telling me he will never be singing Let's Spend the Night Together. This was in 1966, in 10 years. That's one of the theme songs yeah. when he goes out there. You know, yeah, he, let's, he, spend, this, let's spend some time yeah. together. Yeah, not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Sometimes. but then it was let's spend the night together. Of no, it's night. Of course. And he had to switch it. Yeah, yeah. But you, you watch them, and what they do is they go out there and they become gods. They become your answer. They become the motivation you need to yeah. get on with your days. And, the and I'm with sure. Market, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off all the time because I, uh, you know, uh, everything. I'm my thing. my head is so associative. You know, it sparks. So many, that's how I can retain, you know, knowledge and information because uh, the associations, the connections are made very easily in my head. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, 
So what did I want to say? Okay, I forgot. Sorry, you have to move on. <laughs> be sorry. No, no, it happens. <laughs> the thought will come back. Oh yeah, yeah, Close yeah. Your eyes I, and I got it. Uh, I got it back. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I got it back. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm sure that if uh, Pablo Picasso would were to play music, he would have been a bigger rock star than he was in his lifetime. He's very important down in Brazil and in the Portuguese and Spanish world. And people, I mean, the book, The Alchemist, it helped change a lot of people when I was younger. Yes. And Paulo Coelho. Yeah, Paulo Coelho. Yeah. And, you know, he's brilliant. But what happens is you live life and you try to create what you originally created, and it's very hard. You know, and he writes a lot of books. But if you want to start with him, start with The Alchemist. Yeah, I, I said I said Pablo Picasso. Yeah, I know. Not not but Paulo, I was doing Coelho. Not Paulo I heard, Coelho. <laughs> yeah, but Picasso was brilliant. And by the way, he studied sacred knowledge, and he read a lot of these books. I mean, he was absolutely brilliant. Was a virtuoso in many ways. Yeah. It's interesting. Yes, it is. So, so thank you for clarifying it. Yeah, I just wanted to to say that I said, I mean, Paul, he, if Pablo Picasso were to pick up an instrument and start going on tours, yeah. And you know something? He may have. And what he did is he produced his music through diagrams and drawings. It's the same sounds yes. that he visualized his geometric um you know, visions. That's how you build a matrix. You get people to think as you do and you close it off. You close it off with a cube. You close it off with a rectangle. You close it off with a square yes. or you round it off with a circle. Yes. That's the beauty of sacred geometry. Yeah. Get them it. inside it and close them. That's exactly, make a that's a exactly what uh, Leonardo da Vinci was doing with the Vitruvian man trying to create. Yeah. The best way to square the like square the rectangle or whatever. So in fourteen twenty one mm. to fourteen thirty four, the Chinese had the biggest navy in the world, mm. and they went onto their boats. And you could get this wisdom from these two books, mm. two of the better books I've read. They went around the world to share their knowledge, and they ended up coming up. And they ended up in the Mediterranean and they went to Italy. Mm. And they handed what they called the Britannia to the Italians. Mm. And they gave it to the Papa of that area, of the Vatican cities. Mm. And they gave them the wisdom inside there. Inside that wisdom was how to make fireworks. Inside that wisdom was how to make printing presses. Mm. Inside that wisdom was how to aggregate stuff because what the Catholic Church did do is they killed wisdom in Europe, but the rest of the of world didn't do that. Yeah. So what happened is all of a sudden after these boat trips there, the world changed with the printing, all white world changed with the printing press. And, they are, and your birds are back, they're agreeing with me. So- um, Yeah, good for them. Yeah, they're very, they're, you know, King Solomon used to be able to speak with, with birds and animals and stuff like that, so. You know, maybe you can. I get also. it. I, I, I could sit with animals all day and just breathe them in, breathe them out. I love it. And by the way, you could do, I put out an album of singing plants. Okay. And these plants communicate with each other. And one of my artists has the machinery to mic the soil. Mm. And these plants talk to each other. That's awesome. And it's, it's an octave that you and I can't hear. But everyone communicates through sonic messages. Yeah. We do. Of course. You know, I'm looking at you, and the beauty of this is I could feel your energy. You're a young man on a quest. <laughs> and when I come back to Earth and I visualize this in 50 years, I'm sure you'll be saying, you know, I once spoke to this guy. Yes, this one guy. Yeah. Um, okay, so what about like writing? When, when did you start writing? Do you feel that you needed to 
improve or writing was something that you could acquire very easily and naturally like writing flowed through you like a like a fountain or something or some metaphor like that <laughs> i was given a gift or i excelled in a gift of i have a tongue i could talk to you i was I, i'm a persuader and when I decided I needed to write my thoughts because that's all I could leave, I had to then learn the difference between being a man with a tongue who could talk to you in person and a man that could write with a quill or whatever you want to call it, that could leave his thoughts for you. And it took me time to be able to, I believe I excel at it now. I've had help. I, my wife, Debbie, she edits everything I do. And she helped make me better by showing me like the loopholes I leave out because I assume, and this is what you're asking me. Cause when I talk to you, I could feel if you're following me, but when I write to you, I don't know if you follow this. So you got to assume that they're not. So you got to yes. assume that you're going to answer the questions they're not hearing. And often and you're times, not hearing. Yeah. And oftentimes your suspicions are, you know, find out to be true. You find that your suspicions are true, that people are not actually understanding exactly what you mean. I had ex an experience like that where a person, you know, uh, someone who is a free, a free thinker, and he also kind of pivots a lot of the talking points that you make here. Uh, but uh, he does them like, you know, in a very obscure, very, very laconic way. Uh, very fast way without without actually without actually you know <clears throat> um, uh, structuring contextualizing or actually giving a postulation before before actually going into the to, into the next subject he, he just spews out information and and talks really fast you know and it gives and it gives one the, the kind of the veneer of intelligence and knowledge and stuff like that. But actually, it makes you look sort of paranoid or, yeah. It could, but you got to do it with a steady voice. Yes, I had to tell him every time, like, I don't understand what what's your argument because we are we're arguing arguing about something I don't know even something that had to do with religion uh, and I don't know what we were talking about because he moved on from so many topics and like in one minute without actually you know ruminating about one subject and actually trying to dissect it as as best we could he didn't do that so when, when you talk, I can understand and feel you because you try to match your your energy or this you try to match my 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 type of uh, energy and uh, conversational uh, rhythm. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. You and I are creating a song, and we're sharing thoughts, and that's all it is. That's what a song is. I go, you go, I go, you go, you know, it's, there it is, today's song. And speaking of our song today, I'm going to have to go pretty soon. So that's fine. Ask me, ask me questions to leave you with. Yeah. And keep, okay. Keep in touch with me. Okay. I have one question that I've, uh, of course, of course I will. That is awesome to get to know someone of your stature, that someone who is an enlightened being, someone who is a, uh, who is a fixer, you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, you have the Americanized type of corporate approach, approach to life, you know, people, people don't have to get money from the government, they can just, you know, stand on, on their own two feet, they can strap their, the, themselves by the boots, you know, and, and get the life that they so want to. And corporate America is so saturized. It's so, um, it, it's, it, it's like a factory, a factory for pre producing success. And if, if your product or your persona or something is, is not in, in uh, congruence 
with, with the actual, you know, actual need of the market, then you lose yourself. But I want to retrieve the magic, you know, from the depths. I want to be able to think clearly as a human being and, and say like, if I look at an Instagram post and I see someone on a luxurious vacation on a tropical destination and I say, why am I not there? Like, wow, no, it's, it's not real life. They're just, you know, creating an image and the, the ego, they create the ego of themselves. And that ego has been transplanted into the virtual world. So I want to give art and music and philosophy and scholasticism and uh, you know academic rational thought and natural actual actual natural to use our natu natural faculties that we were imbued with as human beings uh, i want to return to, to that type of knowledge and i want to ask you because i hail from the the art the art world, actual like art, the plastic arts, what we used to call the high arts or whatever that means. Uh, so what, what is your, your thought on art? First of all, what is the role of art and why is it necessary? Well, first off, art, if when you get into it, is requesting you get in here from the higher powers because you're pulling in all your energy if you want to make something original yes. for higher powers and you find your whole right ego ego in my world means edging god out that's where you take on wow. a role that's subjective nice. and you have that subjective role that your god and your wisdom is to rule everybody else and you don't understand that you and everybody else are God's children. You come from the supreme being. So your job is to maybe be the leader of batter to help objectively everyone rise to a higher standard. And your art, your creation, whatever you're doing, like whatever my books may mean to you, my, my entire books are to encourage you to understand that you're unique, you're extraordinary, and you're a special being that's part of the whole. And your job is to raise the whole to the highest level we could all go. And you're here to share as much as you can and get the financial rewards you need and you deserve, but not at the expense of everybody else. You're here and your role right now is to make the world a better place for all. And if you raise the all, you go right there with them. But if you raise the all at the expense of everybody, if you raise yourself at the expense of everything else, that's not right. And it won't work. Yeah. And I could leave you with that wisdom. Yeah. So just uh, <clears throat> you, my question was different, but, and you didn't answer it. And I, I'm glad because you brought something to light that is much more important. Um, so I would like to, to thank you and uh, just ask for your general last thoughts. Uh, something that the audience ought to know in their personal lives or is interested? Well, I'll give you a couple of thoughts, all right? I would like your audience, if, the, if they feel it, to go check out my the theschoolofsacredknowledge.com. Mm -hmm. In there, I share courses with you. I'm bringing people in to give lectures who will talk to you with thoughts and wants and needs that I share with you. It's to share. And everyone listening to me, you're here to share with each other. You're not here to take from each other. You're here to feed each other. Your heart works with your lungs. And what happens is you breathe in. And whenever you're upset, audience, listen, if you can. Whenever you need to, and whenever you're having a bad moment, close your eyes and just inhale through your nose and, and exhale. And just close your eyes. And I promise you, whatever was bothering you, if you do 10 of them, 20 of them, whatever, because it's practice, it, that, that bad thought will go away. You're given a gift. You're given a gift where you live inside this body that was created by your two parents in love. 
and you're a love song. And you need to walk around planet Earth knowing that you're love. You are love. And what I said to you a couple of sentences ago is all of you audience, you're unique, you're special, and you're extraordinary. And go create your world. Go create your musical world where you sit there and you, and you hear the song of your community that you live with, your family, your friends, your work, where you all sit there and you try to make the world a better place. Understand, that's why you're really here. And don't let bad thoughts rule you. Just breathe it in and breathe it out. Get rid of it and believe in yourself and understand you don't die. And when you're it's over, as I teach you in the book, we've got to get out of this place, your energy and energy never dies. It may take new forms, but it never dies. And you are a thought and that thought should be love. Yeah. And I thank you. I thank you as well. Well, you heard it first here, folks, and uh, uh, Stephen Matchett has some great, great insights into his own and then to other people's uh, souls as well and uh, lives. Um, I believe it. I believe it too. When we say love, I don't want to expand on that particular notion, you know, of love. Um, I heard, uh, if you know about Lex Friedman uh, talking about the concept of love and uh, AI and stuff like that, and uh, he's, a, he's a very, I don't know where he gets that calmness from, you know, that serenity of mind, but if you heard of him, that's fine. If you haven't, that's also fine, but I want to thank you so much, and it has been an immense pleasure speaking with you, and I will gladly pick up the <clears throat> how do you call it um pick up the <laughs> carry the torch uh, again and uh, i believe that we have a, a fertilized ground for future talks you take care of yourself and we really have and you be thank well you. Thank and keep you. in touch you too, you too. of course and audience thank you for listening Take care. Thank you bye for bye. listening <laughs> again. <laughs> bye. Take care.